Hey everyone, uh, just do a quick update video. Uh, this is a 5SFE Toyota Celica. Um, it's got a micro squirt fuel management system in it. Currently I am using the factory distributor as um, crankshaft and camshaft position. Uh, the big wheel out here is going into the micro squirt as, as crankshaft and the one wheel behind it has four teeth that's going in for camshaft. So there's 24 teeth out here on the big wheel, four teeth in the, on the inside uh, for crank and cam. So uh, basically, uh, it's enough information to get the engine running. Uh, it's great for naturally aspirated and just you know getting it running and getting down the road. But it doesn't give a whole lot of information. Uh, it's got 24 teeth here which means I'm using it for a crankshaft, which means it has 12 teeth at the crank. Uh, 12 teeth at the crank for 360 degrees is only a tooth every 30 degrees. That's not great resolution, gets the job done. Um, the other issue is since it's up here, there it doesn't really calculate for uh, timing belt stretch. So as the RPMs go up, if there's any stretch, it doesn't really, it just knows what it sees here, not at the crank itself. So. Uh, so to go over a quick, um, quick thing on the distributor, like I said, that this is uh, this is enough information to get it running. It's not great. It's um, untimed fuel injection and just enough information to fire the coil to give um, have a distributor distribute the the spark to whatever cylinder it needs to go to. A uh, quick modifi modification you can do to this to make it do more is grind a single tooth off. And what that does is it gives you enough information for completely uh, sequential fuel injection and single fire ignition. So basically if you have coil and plugs, it goes boom, 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 or whatever it is. So it can actually fire it for the proper cylinder. It's not waste bark, it's not using a distributor cap, but um, that's besides the point, there's still, that would be a better way of getting information to the micro squirt, mega squirt, whatever. Uh, it's actually the way I used to do it on my black 3S GTE. Um, but like I said, it's not perfect. So what I'm actually doing, and I want this is what the whole point of the video is. I want to show you a setup that I'm, that I'm changing to. So this is a 97 and up Toyota Camry oil pump. Now it's got the advantage of the higher volume, which is great for turbo applications, higher RPMs, um, all that stuff. So, but, and it's a great modification for a, a change for a 3S to get a little bit extra oil flow, but it's not necessarily the reason why I'm using it in this case. Uh, 97 and up Camrys come with a crankshaft and camshaft position sensor. I don't really care about the crank, uh, camshaft, but crankshaft. So right here is the 97 Camry. It's got a spot for a crankshaft position sensor and it has its own timing gear with teeth. It's a lot like the ones that come on the 3S GTE um, fourth gens. They have a crankshaft position sensor as well. That's what I'm using on my uh, black 3S car. Um, but uh, basically the same thing. It's actually, actually it's the uh, same thing. You can actually uh, put this gear on this oil pump for a 3S GTE to get a crankshaft position sensor, sensor added to it if you don't want to do an external one or whatever. But uh, So this is an option. Um, you can have third gen or fourth gen crank from 3S. Uh, 97 up Camry, 97 uh, Camry, uh, 97 up crankshaft position, but keep in mind you have to run a standalone because um, the missing tooth, it is a 36 with a missing tooth. Missing tooth is 180 out, so that's not going to work for a factory application. So, um, if you were going to try to do something like that. So, um, anyways, uh, but back to the point, changing to this. So, 36 total teeth uh, at the crank, so that's actual total teeth. It gives me uh, a tooth every 10 degrees. That is actually a really good resolution. It's not too much, not too little. Uh, it's going to be better information and it's at the actual crank. So if this is actually where it's at. So ignition isn't going to be skewed at all with belt stretch or anything like that. So uh, in this case, I am actually using this for only. And that's going to be enough information for uh, 
semi-sequential fuel injection, and uh, waste spark. However, I'm going to keep the distributor, so I'm going to have the coil driving the spark, and then the distributor will distribute that. So uh, that's how I'm going to run it in this case. But all I need is this crankshaft position since we're down here, and we're good. So uh, anybody who's building a 5S turbo, um, this is a great little thing to do. It's all parts you can get from the junkyard. I got all this stuff from the junkyard, and then I bought the pump new, uh, just because I didn't want that from the junkyard. Uh, so that's uh, that's gonna be it for right now. There's more updates coming. Uh, I'm probably gonna run this on the dyno as an actually aspirated, but I did put my turbo oil pan on. Uh, I'm gonna block those off, see what I can do with naturally aspirated, then pop the turbo kit on here and go from there.